Good morning, this is Wes Fryer in Philadelphia at the ISTE 2011 conference, and I'm here with Kristen Hokinson. Kristen is someone who has influenced me in tremendous ways when it comes to copyright and an awareness of our fair use rights and lots of things, and you're connected to the Media Lab at Temple University, which everyone needs to know about, and I was just wondering if you would share a little bit about your passion for fair use, copyright, you know, fair use issues, and when you have a chance to have an elevator speech with a teacher about about those issues, what do you tell them? Yeah, so one of the things I think is critical and piece of understanding when it comes to copyright and fair use is that um, the law, copyright, offers us exemptions, right? And, and the law itself says that um, Congress grants uh, limited rights to authors, the exclusive rights to their properties, but it's in order to promote um, science and the useful arts, so creativity and innovation. And the example that I always give to teachers is, we certainly couldn't have the jet plane unless the Wright brothers did their work. But if the Wright brothers were the only ones who were ever able to do that work, we would never have the jet plane. So I think it's important for uh, teachers to understand that when it comes to copyright and fair use, that's the first thing they need to understand. That copyright offers a balance between users' rights, right? Sounds like the video. Right, and the, and, and the, uh, the person who originally copyrighted that work. I think um, what teachers need to understand about fair use is that uh, fair use is a four-step reasoning process. And it's important to understand that everybody's fair use muscles um, exercise at a different level. And um, as long as you have made a reasonable attempt to justify your use of uh, copyrighted material as a fair use, then that's kind of like your get out of jail free card. I know teachers are always worried, am I going to get sued if I use this? And I'm here to tell teachers, yes, you can use copyrighted material. Um, it's important to understand that there are four factors factors to fair use, it's not just the amount of the copyrighted material, but learning how to look at um, their use in comparison to the, or the nature of their new work that they're creating in comparison to the original work. Um, did you use just the right amount considering um, the nature of the copyrighted work and of your use? You know, like I've had students come up to me and making a five minute documentary on, um, on let's say, World War II and want to use bits and pieces from um, from Saving Private Ryan, and is that okay? Well, not if in a four minute video you want to use three minutes of Saving Private Ryan. But if you have um, a, a piece, and, and the other example is I've had kids who say, I need 37 seconds of the song in order to make my point. Like I'm using the song because it has a particular message in my new work. And, um, and that's okay. We need to teach kids to be creative. We need to teach them to be innovative. We need to teach them to um, use the things that are a piece of their pop culture in, in creating new works that um, that connect to uh, to old learning, right? We need we need them to be able to do that. Um, so I encourage teachers to check out the resources through the Media Lab at Temple University, um, as well as the Center for Social Media um, out of the American University Center for Social Media. Um, great resources in both places for teaching about copyright, for teaching about fair use, and for teaching teachers to to learn how to flex those fair use muscles. All right. Awesome. Thanks.